Hi everyone. Um, kind of a weird little video. I don't I haven't done too much stuff like this since I did uh, that John Green video a while back. Maybe I'll do more of this, but um, I I just couldn't not respond to this video I saw. Um, as people who've seen this channel for a while and have watched videos of mine know that I uh, you know, have a particular bone to pick with nihilism uh, in general. Just, um, I've had some bad experiences, uh, and like many people on the internet, I, I like to, to poke fun at them. Um, but I came across something uh, doing research for another video, which you might have already seen or you will see soon, uh, so I won't give it away. But I was looking into JL Mackey. It's kind of the, the intellectual uh, center of um, nihilism at the, right now. Um, he's passed away. Uh, there's a few other people who have taken his place, but he kind of stands in this cornerstone of nihilistic philosophy, and he's, he's right there in it. And so I looked him up on YouTube just to see, you know, what people are writing about. I've only read his paper, so I was wondering if I could catch a lecture or, or something. And I came across this video. Um, this video is titled, You Don't Need God for Morality by the non-alchemist. Let's hop right into it. It's often claimed that you can't have morality without God. In the most basic sense, this claim is obviously false, even on theism. Atheists can and do have moral values and perform moral actions all without believing in God. Popular proponents of moral arguments admit this, but what many people mean Okay, so first of all, before he goes into this, he sets up this, I'm going to call it a straw man. Some people will argue it's not a straw man because um, people actually do believe this, uh, even though it's a vast minority. Um, but this is an argument brought up that as an atheist, you don't have any place to couch your morals. And so you you can't process morality, right? Like you don't you don't have a justification. You have no foundation. You are kind of sitting in midair on a on this cloud. You're you're pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and you're just making moral claims without having any any reason for making the moral claims. I think that's a that's a fair criticism. And um at least, you know, some some being beyond existence can can begin to have provide understanding for this. Um, but that's not the point he talks about. He talks about people uh, that can atheists be good, right? Can atheists act morally? Well, of course. And he gets into that and he's like, but what people are really asking, so which is, a, a, are people really asking one or are they asking the other? We're gonna deal with this second one. I, I don't even know why he brought up the first one because it has nothing to do with the video. It, it, it's just like an easy dunk, it's like, yeah, we can be moral. I... When they say this has more to do with whether we can ground morality without God in any meaningful way. It's claimed that on atheism there is no way to do this because objective morality must be fundamentally dependent on God to be coherent. There are various ways an atheist could respond to this claim. The first option is to just say, so what? So he's going to introduce the various ways. And um, here, the first one is, so what? Suck it up, buttercup. Facts don't care about your feelings, and the like. It could be argued that there are good reasons to reject standard notions of objective morality. And you might want to say with Mackie, we can find- So this is a huge jump, okay? I think he makes two different points at once. And this is, this is, so he first says, so what? So what, right? Who cares if, you know, I have a God to describe my morality? Like, it doesn't matter. Um, and you can take the so what route. I, I think that's, it's a fair one, except why do you make any moral decisions? If you don't have any basis for your morality, then like, then why, why did you get mad about anything? Right? So what? It's all just, you know, arguments passing back and forth, but they don't mean anything. Um, uh, so what? I, 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 I hate falling into the meme, but the meme is uh, Nazism. So what? 
who cares it's genocide like, right like genocide happens all the time it it's just one culture fighting another it's just the way it goes i mean historically that's been the way it is um so so what but that's not true that's that's that you're gonna find very few people who who kind of go in that route and i think now there's a difference between so what which is um i don't have any place to couch it i have no place moral objective standard right um now that's that you have room for relativism there which at least is something right you could say well my society doesn't approve of that so at least there is something there is a standard and you can build up something uh like some sort of evolutionary argument for morality saying over time our cultures to be functional require us not to kill each other that's an argument then he jumps to jl mackey okay this is this is the part that blows my mind he jumps from that which is a somewhat rational somewhat rational not quite though but uh, it, it it is a position it is a position to ask the question why do we need a a place to root our our understanding of morality um i think it's a dumb question of course you need that um how are you going to be able to be coherent at all it, this is philosophy right like we we're all about reasons for things um but then he jumps to jail mackey jail mackey being you know the nihilist guy so it's not so what that's very different so what is is saying i don't need a reason i can just do the right thing i'm like okay that's livable nihilism says there is no right thing uh and he takes this quote from mackey which i think kind of ripping it from from the the context of nihilism and saying we can find satisfactory biological sociological and psychological explanations for moral thinking which can account for the phenomena of the moral sense and conscious in natural terms now let me simplify this to a certain extent and he's going to say we can question the idea of objective morality at all um and he says this is basically saying anything we think is morality uh this moral thinking this moral debating is really just breaks down to biological uh interactions and, and the way we interact with our neighbors and um the way our brains process things that's that's at the core of all of our moral discussions and um that's not so what that is that is nihilism that's full-on nihilism which is fine you can be a nihilist but admit it right it's and and this is kind of the core we we missed the the train the train was that can you have morality without god and he says so what or no so the the response is uh no and it's no um which is fine those are those are answers but it's not a slam dunk that is i've never seen somebody so happy to embrace nihilism that like you just you just want to to kind of unhook yourself from the world i've seen what nihilism does to people and and how it hurts them uh, firsthand myself included i i definitely fell into a dark place in my life where i didn't feel like there was meaning in the world and it was not pleasant and it's not something that you would want to take lightly but it feels like in this case he is taking the idea of nihilism as just a way to win an argument like a position you can just take and when you see real evil in the world and he's going to talk about there's there's real evil like why 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 would you take nihilism <laughs> so obviously he doesn't believe it um right because if he did then he wouldn't make the videos he does and we'll talk about that but i'll, I'll let him speak more i'm i find satisfactory biological sociological and psychological explanations of moral thinking which account for the phenomena of the moral sense and conscience in natural terms and leave it at that even if we do reject standard notions of objective morality 
it could be argued that there are still objectively better or worse ways to achieve subjective goals that yeah it, yeah that's fine um if i want to build a tower um would it would it help to pay my workers well yeah but you can think of plenty of things that are are moral that have no impact on whether or not we meet our goals it no this seems like a non non issue share another option for atheists who fall in the traditional moral realist camp is to argue that grounding the good in god's nature is more problematic than any of the alternatives especially okay so he makes this this claim that maybe grounding your belief in god your your tying morality and god together is more problematic than the alternatives which is we're not sure yet we haven't heard any alternatives yet so let's hear especially for religious theists let's first consider how we would come to know if objective moral values and duties exist if they exist in the first place what reason would we have to believe that objective moral How would we know moral objective values and duties exist in the first place? Um, and then he links Craig. So Craig's going to give us this. And I'll link this video in the description. We'll have this video in the description. I, I might put both in just for your... Moral values and duties exist. Well, basically, it would be our moral experience. Just as we believe in the world of sense objects around us, physical objects, because we have a, a sense of them through our senses. Um, so we can believe in the objective reality of moral values and duties on the basis of our moral experience. In the absence of some reason to defeat your experiences, you're justified in believing in what those experiences teach you. For Christian theists who want to take the Bible at face value. Oh, I'll let me get to that. So Craig basically says, the way you in response to a question about nihilism like it's not clear that these objective moral doubt values and duties exist so um how do we know and his response to nihilism is well intuitively we intuitively know that some things are wrong and some things are right right it's 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 a sense in, a, in us in some way um some people have less of that sense and some people have more but um you know, we all, we all sense when something is wrong and is unjust. Um, you see that among children. That's not fair. They'll say that. They'll say stuff like that. And it's like, well, where does that, where does that come from? There's a certain sense of um, that's bad. Uh, now, you have nihilists who will argue that that's, that's some psychology, some bio, biology or whatever. Um, he's making the argument that maybe that's not. Um, but that's an argument, right? Um, so let's, uh, let's go back, we'll give them a little, little time to talk. Believing in what those experiences teach you. For Christian theists who want to take the Bible at face value, this is highly problematic, as I pointed out elsewhere. If Craig can use his moral experience to get to the existence of objective morality in the first place, then surely any moral realist, theist or not, can use their moral experience to reject as immoral the counterintuitive moral monstrosities that are depicted in the Bible. Um, okay, so he says, my intu you can use intuitive philosophy or intuitive moral sense to get to objective moral reality. And he's saying, well, I can use my intu in intuitive moral understanding to see that things that you believe are disgusting and, um, and vile. And he'll, he'll bring up slavery example, and genocide. Slavery and genocide. Eric okay. Wielenberg highlights another problem of making morality fundamental. And, and we'll get to this part too, but he's like, it's, it's fair then that I get to use my sense. If you get to use your sense, and Craig's not making an argument for couching, uh, morality in a, in a theistic framework. He's just arguing that we have an intuitive sense of being able to, um, to understand objective morality or, or something like objective morality. And so he's arguing between the lines like there's a bunch of stuff that's being unsaid and it's not being explicit and it, it feels very like uh t-ball you're like you're putting up the, the ball on the on the t 
and then you're having the kid swing at it and it's like well, that's it's not super impressive you you put it there mentally dependent on god if we trust our basic moral intuitions. But notice that the dependency thesis implies that nothing distinct from God is intrinsically good or evil. It is impossible for anything distinct from God to be intrinsically good or evil. This is because intrinsic value is the value a thing has in virtue of its intrinsic nature. Okay, sorry. He, he does this thing where he zooms in and I, I can't stand it. So I'm gonna read the rest. This is because intrinsic value is the value a thing has in virtue of its intrinsic nature. Pain, for example, seems to be an intrinsic evil. It is evil in, of, uh, in and of itself. It is badness. Its badness is part of its intrinsic nature. It's not bespo <laughs> ah, bestowed upon it from some external source. Yet the theist who accepts the dependency thesis must reject this. Okay, a few things here. I know of no theist, no theist that I know of, and there's probably some, I will admit, there, there may be some, that believes that there's intrinsic evil. Like, um, I, I think it's a common theist, at least Christian take, that the only thing that exists is, is good, and, and any evil is deprivation of good. Um, and I know this, this kind of, this feels like it's a, it's like a gotcha, like I'm, I'm, I'm like nitpicking, but these are really important kind of things to hold in mind. Pain, for example, is not intrinsically evil. And I'll, I'll prove it right now. There are people who don't have pain receptors. They, they can't feel pain. You might think that is a, that would be good. We are, they are not feeling pain. They, they don't have to deal with the, that negative aspect of, of the universe. But pain isn't negative. Pain is a reaction. Okay. If the kid breaks his arm, he's not going to feel pain. So he's going to keep living with this broken arm and it's going to heal weird. It's going to be crooked. He's not going to be able to use it as well. Is that good? It doesn't seem good to me. Uh, pain is actually incredibly useful. And so we, we do this thing where uh, he sets up and he says, this thing in the universe is intrinsically bad, but it's not God. So it, the dependency thesis fails. But I don't think it's true. I don't think there's anything in the universe that's intrinsically good or evil. I, I maintain that. So why why is this different? Um, what is what is the point being made here? Uh, is this feels incorrect? This is this is the assumption of the writer on what is intrinsically evil. That is from your moral framework. It is not mine. So I can hold the dependency thesis and disagree with you. Um, maybe there's a section of this book that I I haven't I haven't read this book, so I don't know if he goes into something like this. But um, this presenter does not of its intrinsic nature. I go further. Pain, for example, seems to be an intrinsic evil. It is evil in and of itself. Its badness is part of its intrinsic nature and is not bestowed upon it from some external he's, source. He's reading a lot better. Yet the theist <laughs> who accepts the dependency thesis must reject this. Put another way, there's a tension between how we would come to know that objective morality exists in the first place and the bill of goods many theists are trying to sell you. It okay, now... He's making an argument, and so I'm, I'm trying to understand this, and I was having a little bit of trouble kind of completely articulating this. But intuitive nature will tell us if things are good or evil in themselves. The dependency thesis says that actually nothing is good or intrinsically good or evil in itself. So we have to, we have to kind of find a way that, that kind of brings the two together, I think, is the idea. Um, that we can't say something is good or evil by our, our moral, he, he seems to think that moral intuitions are the entirety of this. And I think this is the, the main issue that I keep running into is that Craig is not arguing for moral intuitionism in itself. He's using it as a proof against nihilism. This is an argument, argument against what you were saying before. 
but this is a different topic and you never let anyone respond respond to it it's just kind of out of nowhere sorry i'm gonna if we come to know the good through moral perception and intuition then i would suggest it's intuitively commonplace to locate badness in facts about a given situation we don't locate the good according to moral intuition like that's that's not the point being made We, we don't Craig doesn't argue that we we locate God through our moral intuition. That's that's not not it. And and nothing is intrinsically good except for God. That's what the dependency thesis says. Um like it, it's confusing when somebody says something is like a good action that we're saying that's intrinsically good. It's 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 pulling in something else it's 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 reflective of something else it's like it's not it's not the thing it's not a noun right i i feel like i'm lost right now i i and only later come to be convinced that those facts on their own would be completely irrelevant through some weird theistic meta-ethical theory saying that moral perception and intuition are sufficient to accept the existence of objective morality but then saying they are totally unreliable when it comes to locating what makes things right or wrong seems like trying to have your cake and eat it too. <sighs> okay. So this is the part where I I am I'm hopping off the train because I, I have no clue where he's going with this. He's arguing that we use our moral intuitions to locate the good according to a theistic moral framework. But the very facts that we use to get there don't don't get us all the way there. And so now we have to backdoor theistic morality into the into the process and that's that's not necessary. Like I don't under, like I don't think you have to be a Christian to understand that these are just dumb arguments. Because this is the this is the thing um let's look at ethical theories right utilitarianism for one utilitarianism says that basically we want the best outcome for for whatever we're doing we want um to have the most people living by the end of this or um we want to have the most pleasure and the least amount of pain now right we this is why we have in philosophy hypotheticals and we we bring up challenges and we say well what about Thanos, right? You you know in, intuitively that, um, or by some kind of deduction of reason through your natural senses and your natural abilities, that uh, you're able to kill half the population of the entire universe, um, but you get to save th that the people who live will have amazing lives. Okay, utilitarian utilitarianism would say, like to a certain extent, yeah. Correct. That, that would be the correct path to take. Our moral intuition says, uh, some moral intuition says no, or our kind of collective reasoning about ethics says no. Um, and that points to, well, there's something in our intuition that says that's not the case. Um, think of these ethical frameworks as an equation, right? That our moral intuitions are able to kind of be a compass, but it's not a map doesn't get us where we need to go. It's very directional. And so when we see, when we're given this equation, we put all of our facts into this equation like variables. And then on the other end, we get the outcome. We're able to falsify the outcome and say, okay, I don't know about the other stuff. In this case, that seems wrong, right? So maybe this, this whole equation that we have has something goofy in the middle. And, and that is the, that is the argument I would, I would give in response to this, that any ethical theory that we have is not going to produce the same results, the right results, right? Like we're, we're going to be saying like, well, what if we value this? What if we value intent, right? What if somebody intends to do something really good, um, but they do something horrible? That's that's philosophy. That's ethics. That's that's all of this. 
that moral perception and intuition are sufficient to accept the existence of objective morality, but then saying they are totally unreliable when it comes to locating what makes things right or wrong seems... And the thing is, these are two totally different things. Being able to understand that there is objective morality and be able to say why there's objective morality are two way different things. No one is claiming that objective morality is moral intuitions. This is a method of understanding that there is objective morality. At least that's what Craig is arguing. And so I don't... I'm lost. I'm honestly lost. And I think we get to this, this point at the end here. Seems like trying to have your cake and eat it too. I'm just scratching the surface here. So for an in-depth overview of why grounding the good in God is deeply problematic, see the links in the description. And while we're on the topic of morality, here is a playlist highlighting various moral problems in the Bible. Okay, two things. Why grounding the good in God is a problem. You didn't give any. You didn't, you didn't, none of it has been mentioned here. And I know there's links in the description, blah, 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 but like, none of it was countered. What was countered was a reaction to nihilism. And it wasn't even countered. It was, it was used incorrectly. And then the response next is to talk about, here's a list of everything horrible in the Bible. The problem is what are you using to determine what is horrible? You're using probably your intuitions, maybe, or using an ethical framework. The thing is, all of these are nonsense to nihilism. And like, these are positions that everyone can take. And I know that your, your, your channel that's talking about all these kind of counters to Christian, Christian philosophical arguments, and that's fair. But like, one of the arguments that you bring up completely counters the entire point of, of your other content, right? It would be like, let's say this, someone says your house is ugly, right? You don't understand color theory because you're blind, right? Okay. That's a, or uh, colorblind. You don't understand color theory because you're colorblind. And your argument is two things. Um, two things. One of them is, um, the argument could be, colors don't exist, right? That's one route we can take when arguing these people. That, you know, color, color doesn't exist or beauty doesn't exist in the end. So when you say, I, my house isn't beautiful, well, a beauty doesn't exist, so take that and then two um your understanding of beauty is completely off and three i'm going to show you all the ways that christians paint their houses horribly or something like that and it's just like you're <sighs> the arguments for theism are not necessarily christian you can be a deist and still be a theist you know like the so you're not even addressing the core of the argument. And this is where I come down to, to, to this kind of point. And I, I don't want to drive, drive this too far. You seem like you've been really hurt, right? By, by Christianity. And I, I get it, but Christianity isn't theism. And even though I'm a Christian and I, I, I take that, like, don't, don't conflate the two because that's philosophically dishonest. I, I don't have much more to say. I non-alchemist. I'd love to talk to you and, and you know, I'd, I'd be surprised if you watched this, but I, I don't know if I have much more to say. Thanks everyone for listening. And, um, I'll see you later with more rants about nihilism, I guess. So.